I don't think it's a coincidence that this did not premiere during Black History Month. Hey everyone, this is D Movie Man, fellow cinephile, popcorn addict, and emerging film critic, coming to you with reliable recaps, reviews, and reactions. And I am officially here with my first full-length review from my Sundance excursion back in January. Don't worry, I will have a separate video where I'll delve a little bit deeper into what that experience was for me and just how... <laughs> I don't even have the words. I can't think of a good adjective, but... Just know that it was everything that I did not expect and everything that I absolutely needed. So more on that later. But in the meantime, I'm coming to you all with my review for The American Society of Magical Negroes. Written and directed by Kobe Labee and starring Justice Smith, David Allen Greer, and Amli Bogan. Story-wise, the film is centered around Aaron a young artist who struggles to establish his personal identity and voice in a distinctly Eurocentric society. However, he soon finds himself recruited into a secret society of magical black people whose lives are dedicated to a cause of utmost importance, namely, bringing comfort and relief to the lives of white people everywhere. So, yeah, <laughs> I will start with the pros. Are there many of them? I guess we'll see. Now, given that this is a satire film, let me go ahead and start by saying that I do enjoy satire in general across various mediums and films, of course, are no exception. Although I will have more to say later about the satire in this film and how it holds up. I do think the concept and the idea of highlighting the trope of the magical Negro was actually a really intriguing idea. This is something that Spike Lee coined as a term back in 2001 in response to the films that were popping up around that time, like The Green Mile, The Legend of Bagger Vance, what dreams may come, and so on. These characters who seemingly have no real identity and no real motivation outside of assisting and propelling the main character or protagonist forward in their journey, and more often than not, those protagonists just so happen to be white. So with that, I think the moments where the film is taking very obvious shots at those films and using very direct references to them, I think those moments were actually funny. <laughs> because it's like, look, not even just the familiarity of it and some of us who may be familiar with those films anyway, but genuinely mocking the overall framework and characterization <laughs> you know, present in those films and stepping out of the more precarious elements, of which there are plenty, to really address the overall ridiculousness in how this trope does function. I also have to say that there are a lot of talented people in this film and quite a few familiar faces, which of course is always enjoyable. Aisha Hines, Nicole Byer, Drew Tarver, and Michaela Watkins, all actors that I've enjoyed in the multitude of projects that I've seen them in. So just off the rip, it was a pleasant surprise seeing some of these actors pop up in this film. Of course, of course, I have to give my biggest kudos to David Allen Greer, whose career started in 1981 when he portrayed Jackie Robinson in the Broadway production of The First, which earned him his first Tony nomination. He has been in this business for 43 years, which is incredible. And I say this all the time, but there are those special actors and actresses that, of course, I'm introduced to or was introduced to in those formative years, those significant years of childhood and growing up. So the fact that I knew him not only from In Living Color and Martin, but also Boomerang, do you have children, a boy and a girl? Oh my God, what happened? Get in, I'll explain it all on the way. Ah! 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 
it immediately cemented him as an actor I enjoyed and of course was a part of just some really special projects that I enjoyed watching. And even over the years, just seeing him star in just, you know, so many things like his career and just, I don't know, just him as an actor and as a person, he's just someone I've continued to enjoy. So naturally, you know, seeing him as a core part of this film, I was excited. And I have to say without a doubt that he is the best part of this film, not just as far as the comedy, but when the film does attempt to delve into the more serious grounded moments, he shines there as well. So I'm glad that even with, you know, everything that the film is trying to tackle and address, he is the one aspect of it that just felt consistently enjoyable, consistently solid, and that was something I appreciated. And that being something that not only kept me invested, but also kept me entertained as well. All right, now I'm going to jump over to the cons. Now, I try to give grace whenever I can. I try to give some films a chance, even when I'm unsure. But sometimes it just is what it is. So I would like to start this off by giving a definition of satire since I did reference it in the pros. And I would just like to delve a little bit deeper here. Satire is defined as the use of humor, irony, exaggeration, or ridicule to expose and criticize people's stupidity or vices particularly in the context of contemporary politics and other topical issues. And we've seen the evolution of satire through various art forms and mediums and absolutely in various films. So I can absolutely appreciate pulling that trope apart and really examining the very problematic nature of how that trope functions what it says about blackness, what it says about the identity of blackness, the role of blackness, and how it then ties into these various narratives. But <laughs> the framework and the general lens in which this film and this story is presented <sighs> is questionable at best. To really bring this point home, I'm going to directly quote an article written by Tim Parks for the New York Review titled The Limits of Satire. The criteria for assessing satire are fairly simple. If it doesn't point towards positive change or encourage people to think in a more enlightened way, it has failed. That doesn't mean it's not amusing and well-observed or even, for some, Hilarious, in the way, say, witty mockery of a political enemy can be hilarious and gratifying and can intensify our sense of being morally superior. But as satire, it has failed. The worst case is when satire reinforces the state of mind it purports to undercut, polarizes prejudices, and provokes the very behavior it condemns. Well said. And I don't think there could be a more appropriate summation of my issues with this film. If that wasn't the intention, eh. But what I saw was a director using his own complicated relationship with race to create this really disjointed narrative about a character who just so happens to be biracial, who is discovering himself and carving out his identity and all of that. And then somehow within this discovery of this society of magical Negroes who conveniently all have one general skin tone, he must then find a way to be the voice of reason to this society and also be free to pursue his relationship with a woman who just so happens to not be black. And with that, trying hard to subvert the idea of what blackness is and what it represents and how it's perceived and what it means to him personally and how his life has been, been distorted or how his life has been shaped by it and so on. 
And I'm going to be honest, once I realized that's what was going on, I was like, yeah, no. <laughs> It's definitely a no for me, though. My expectations were not high because I had already heard the backlash as far as the trailer and all that. But I was like, I want to see it for myself because I know how I feel about something. And how I feel about it is how I feel. Maybe, just maybe, there's a chance that this might have something to say. Well, no. It thinks it has something to say. It thinks it's it's clever or in-depth or insightful I, somehow this film feels like it is saying something significant about the dynamics of race and america and the white community and the black community and how all that functions and i just felt like it was so rudimentary <laughs> you know it just felt like abc one two three like what are we really talking about here what also does not help is that Aaron is not a particularly interesting character. He's not a compelling character. Like, there are no real layers. There are no real complications. Everything is surface. We reference the fact that he's biracial, but what does that mean? We reference the fact that he is struggling with his art because it's this big, ugly yarn contraption, but what does that mean? <laughs> like, are we supposed to sympathize because no one wants to buy his weird, strange yarn art. Like, even the establishing of the society itself is very limited. Like, the world building is, like, non-existent. Like, how did this come to be? How does it work? Are there people who ever felt differently? Are there factions within this group who feel like, eh, maybe I'm not feeling this? Like, None of that. It's just this, you know, very loose, half-baked idea as far as, you know, let's get into the trope of the magical Negro and let's throw in this rom-com and let's try to say something about black identity and racial politics. And I'm just like... <laughs> Blackness is simply the foundation that this story is trying to build itself upon. But it is not an appreciation of blackness. It is not a celebration of blackness. It is not like a cathartic or deeper understanding of blackness or, you know, how it could be perceived or how, you know, blackness shapes some of us, you know, personally. This feels like a film that was made for certain people <laughs> to possibly feel bad or assess themselves and the way they see black people or blackness and just teach and preach generally. Although I am black, my life nor my life experiences will ever be about teaching other people and specifically non-black people about my experience as a black man, especially in America. Like, why? This film uses extremely broad strokes for these characters to come to these conclusions about race and racial dynamics, and it was just so weak <laughs> to me. And I have to say that Barbie did the same thing. Like, there is this big monologue moment where it's like, oh, and ha, ah, and who, and it's like, look, I get it, but even that is so basic in and of itself. It's such a ABC one, two, three. Tell me how to get to Sesame Street. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I love you, you love me, we're one big family. Like, no, <laughs> like we are adults. And if you're going to attempt to address these kinds of topics, these complicated layered topics, then do it and do it with a mature, considerate approach. And let me say that everything I know and appreciate about blackness came from a lens of celebration and learning and knowledge and it just being this general journey into culture and, and community. You know what I'm saying? That is what my family, you know, my friends, my community, that is what I was taught, especially at a young age. Knowing that and having that lens Things like this don't do anything for me. Believe it or not, the black experience is not just all about race. Now, I won't say that it hasn't been shaped by it in some way. 
I'm not saying it's not affected by it. But is that the summation of the Black experience? Absolutely not. And then, I suppose I've been avoiding the elephant in the room, but I should just say it. We struggle (laughs) enough to have representation in the form of Black imagery and Black narratives that are not just racial, are not just about gangs and drugs and civil rights and all these other things. And you mean to tell me the first time we have something where it's about magical Black people, it's for this. We can't put money towards a world in which Black people are magical and, you know, all these things, but this is what we are able to like put funding and distribution and you know showcases and film festival presentations for (laughs) oh my god is this who we are is this what we represent what's truly disappointing is knowing that for all the magic (laughs) that we truly have in our achievements in our culture, in our talent, in our abilities, and so much more. No one thought to make a film where we could actually see that magic being represented in a literal and figurative sense, but magic that instead is used to reinforce a stereotype that already exists that you are not really criticizing, but playing into. Wow. Message. So I'm going to give the American Society of Magical Negroes a D plus. <laughs> Again, I just don't understand who this was for. <laughs> like, I, I really don't know what to say. And to again reference Tim Park's article, this film is basically failed satire masquerading as in-depth insight and introspective commentary. Let me just say that if you lack the requisite heft to flesh out this vision (laughs) as it pertains to blackness and you just don't have it, in you to tackle or even add a fresh new take to any of that, in the end, you've not only wasted your efforts, but you have also wasted the audience's time. And I can definitely say that regarding this film, my time was absolutely wasted. The American Society of Magical Negroes will be premiering in theaters March 15th. You guys were free to check it out. Leave your thoughts below and let me know what you think. So, once again, this is D Movie Man signing off. And I'll see you at the movies.